When I decided to make a video essay series on the subject of love, the first thing that came to my mind was Tamako Love Story. Why that was the case could partially be due to my bias towards Naoka Yamada, her being my favorite director, but a lot of it has to do with what Tamako Love Story is really all about. At its core, the movie is a pure incarnation of incomplexity. I use the word incomplexity because I wouldn't necessarily call Tamako Love Story simple. Rather, it's unromanticized. It's incomplex because it actively avoids the convolutions and complexities involved in the plots of a lot of romance stories. What I'm trying to say is that Tamako Love Story is the embodiment of a love story. No other piece of media I've seen has captured a profound theme of love in such a modest way like Tamako Love Story has. There are many methods of finding love. One method stems from the quote, Love is like a butterfly. If you chase it, it will elude you. However, if you stand still, it will come and calmly rest on your shoulder. In the previous part of this series, I analyzed a light novel series and the theme of love not always eluding its pursuers. Pursuing love is a completely legitimate method of finding love, but Tamako Love Story contradicts Bloomin' to You regarding Saiki Sayaka in that it illustrates the more patient method of awaiting the butterfly. Tamako Love Story is split into two sections. The first half focuses more on Mojizo, how he came to love Tamako and his struggle to convey his feelings to her, while the second half focuses more on Tamako and how she came to terms with her mutual feelings for Mochizo. Mochizo and Tamako were both born under families that owned mochi shops in the Usagiyama shopping district. The community that developed around the shopping district was closely knit, so it was only natural that Mochizo and Tamako would end up spending a lot of their childhood and beyond together. It is a tale as old as time, someone falling for their childhood friend. And that was exactly what happened to Mochizo. He fell in love with Tamako, but his love wasn't strong enough to overcome his realism. As Mochizo reached the end of his high school career, he began to seriously think about what he wanted to do with his life. He decided to go to college in Tokyo, which pressured him to confess his feelings to Tamako as time ran short. Unlike Mochizo, Tamako did not have the same focus on what she wanted to do with her life. She fell under the assumption that everything would always be the same with her, Mochizo, and the rest of the Usagiyama shopping district forever. However, it is in the times when you least desire for change that the unexpected occurs the most. As Tamako began to realize the drastic change that being a senior brought before her and her friends, she reconsidered what she actually wanted to do. That was when a drastic change, something entirely new, found its way to rest on her shoulder. A butterfly. In the middle of attempting to understand what her future entailed, love's butterfly came and calmly rested on her shoulder. Mochizo confessed his love to her. At first, she was shocked and unsure of how to react. She ran away from Mochizo and consistently avoided him because love was something new to her. It was clear that Tamako reciprocated his feelings, but those feelings surfaced so suddenly that she was unaware of how to interpret them. Her friends, that she thought were growing apart from her with the sudden change of being seniors, were actually the ones to reassure her, help her interpret her feelings, and allow her the opportunity to confess. Tamako seemingly wanted everything to always remain the same. She never actively saw a drastic change or a new opportunity in her life. She had never even considered the idea of what to do after high school, let alone something as apparently intimidating as love. That was the reason that she found change. Even though all of the sudden changes in her life seemed to be negative at first, they turned out to be positive. Becoming a senior put a lot of pressure on her to think about things that she never really wanted to think about. Receiving a confession gave her a lot of stress as she struggled to understand feelings she had never paid any attention to. Even with both the pressure and the stress, Tamako pulled through, which gave her the realization that change is not negative simply because it is change. Change is what you make of it, whether that be positive, negative, or both. Tamako exemplified how to properly await the butterfly of love, or more broadly, the butterfly of change. The method of awaiting love to find you is often misinterpreted as waiting and expecting it to come at some point. In some cases that works, but at that point it follows more along the lines of pursuing love. If you are actively waiting for the butterfly, waiting for it to come, it would be far more efficient to just pursue it. The butterfly has a way of knowing what you expect and don't expect. One of its primary purposes is to pleasantly surprise you when it lands on you, not to fulfill a desire. Tamako never once desired the feeling of love in her life, but she didn't avoid it either. She simply never thought of it. Instead of waiting around, expecting love to come to her, she pushed her feelings into the depths of her heart to resurface when the time was right. Waiting may not be the best word to describe Tamako's method of finding love. The word waiting implies that you were expecting something to happen, even if you aren't actively pursuing that occurrence. So rather than comparing finding love to waiting for a butterfly, I'd like to make a slight adjustment to the quote. Love is like a butterfly. It comes in many different colors, can be found in many different places, and can be found in many different ways. 
It can be pursued, but it will elude some who pursue it no matter how persistent they are. It can also pursue, but it will always pursue when it's least expected. Even so, love is unlike a butterfly in that it's indiscriminate. Everyone can find love anywhere, no matter the method or how many times it has been ignored, found, lost, or pursued. Sweet.